welcome back to the Style and Beauty Doctor here on YouTube. And in today's video, we're gonna be testing some of the best moisturizers for hyperpigmentation that are out there. Disclaimer, because sometimes people get things a little twisted when it comes to skincare and like to lessen the confusion. By no means are we saying that these moisturizers are going to treat and cure your hyperpigmentation. No, no, no. Treating hyperpigmentation is all about having a routine where things work together hand in hand and tangent with each other. So definitely check out the hyperpigmentation playlist. There's one on the technical stuff that you need to know about actives and stuff like that. And then there's a playlist where there are viewers quite like yourselves who come on the channel and talk to us about what they did to get rid of their hyperpigmentation so make sure you check those out but not before you watch today's video so keep watching today's video is based on a video that the lovely, the talented, the beautiful, the extravagant Dr. Alexis Stevens did on her channel not too long ago. I will link the video so you check it out. I would highly suggest watching it from beginning to end because there's lots of technical information in that video that you need to know. Here, I'm just testing the formulations of the moisturizers to let you know like what they feel like and what they may smell like because there's a couple of them that will smell so good and so on and so forth. Now, why are these better for hyperpigmentation than other moisturizers? For the full tea on that, definitely check out Dr. Alexis Stevens' video. But in a nutshell, it's because of the fatty acids that are are included in these formulations. So they have tyrosinase inhibiting properties. That basically means that the cells that are causing the melanin to overproduce, it comes in and is like, yo, chill, all right? Just chill, all right? Just calm down. They also help with cell turnover. Cell turnover is a process by which the skin renews itself and you have those new, fresh, juicy, beautiful new skin cells. But yes, what sparked me to do this video is that Stradia sent me some products for review and I picked up this moisturizer and I was like, wait, isn't this that moisturizer that Dr. Alexis was talking about in that video? So then I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just kind of do like a roundup on, you know, what the moisturizers and everything felt like on the skin. So here we go, starting with the Stradia Liquid Gold Moisturizer. This was sent to me in PR. This is $27 and it is fragrance free. So there's no strong smell to this one. Um, just cause something's fragrance free doesn't mean it can't have a scent. It just means there are no components in there that are added in specifically to fragrance the product. So this feels extremely lightweight but it was very shiny on my oily skin and that's not a finish that I particularly love but you know some people don't mind it and if you don't mind it you know maybe this might be a great moisturizer for you it didn't feel extra greasy on my skin which was great but it did have a lot of shine to it which I don't love for a finish for for me personally but it did layer okay with my sunscreen would you try this have you tried this let us know in the comments below next up the Elta MD intense moisturizer. You're going to get 2.8 ounces of product and it is $14. This is also fragrance free. So this has a consistency like aquaphor, which makes sense because one of the ingredients listed is petrolatum. So this, you know, tells you that it is a nighttime moisturizer, which I would have to agree with because of the texture and the feel of it. I would own, me personally, I would only use this at night. I could see myself maybe if it was like super, super dead cold in the winter, maybe liking to use something like this during the daytime with a sunscreen on top because it, you know sometimes it can get really cold and dry here and this is intense so this only has petrolatum and paraffin in it and that's it which makes this a moisturizer that you can look into if you're using a prescription topical skincare like a retin-a that does tend to irritate the skin so it even says that on the back of it now this is gonna be greasy very 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 greasy <laughs> i personally don't mind a greasy moisturizer at night i mean my pillowcases and my linens might say otherwise but I don't particularly mind a, a very greasy moisturizer at night. Uh, when I put this on and woke up in the morning, my skin did look and feel very supple. Probably not something I would want to use as my regular nighttime moisturizer, but I can see someone with dry skin, very dry skin in particular, um, and even more in particular, if you have very dry skin and it's winter, this might be something that I could see you using and really loving. Because, you know, sometimes I buy products just for the sake of reviewing, and when I'm done with it, you know, either it goes to friends or family members or I just keep it. This I can see myself using on my hands and my feet because those are areas that are just, you know, 
very prone to dryness, especially in the winter time. Have you tried this? Would you try this? Let me know in the comments. Now, next up, the Acure Incredibly Clear Mattifying Moisturizer. You're gonna get 1.7 fluid ounces of products, and I got this for about $11.22 on Amazon. As its name suggested, this is a mattifying product. It's a cream that once you blend it in, turns into like a gel-like texture. It feels really light on the skin. I used this on one of the days here in New York where it kind of got well, you know, a little hot, a little hot, and it, it, it did pretty well. I would say the mattifying properties on it are just okay. This isn't the most mattifying moisturizer I've ever tried. I, have for the longest time, have liked the Murad Oil and Pore Control Mattifier. Some people feel like it's too, like, like, that one feels too thick. I like it, I don't know, to each their own, right? This one I would say is probably more, like, if you're really, really oily, like, it's probably more ideal when it's, like, warm but it's not like blazing out so i would say like maybe in the 70s to getting into like the early 80s but in the the height of summer where it's like really humid it might not it, it might not do much for you but still a nice moisturizer i also felt like this layered really nicely with my sunscreen so that's also a plus have you tried it would you try it let me know in the comments. So next up, the Ceramedics Ultra Moisturizing Cream. You're gonna get six ounces of product for $17.99. This is also fragrance free. Now this looks thick as heck, but it actually goes on pretty sheer and it feels really lightweight. There's also ceramides in here. And I would say that this is probably something, although I did test it on my face and it was, it was okay. It's not something that my oily skin would love on my face, but since my body skin is drier than my facial skin, I could see me for sure. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna keep this and use this on my body in the winter time to moisturize my body. I would even use this in the summertime, but just at night. Because you know, sometimes in the summertime, that heat and everything and the air conditioning running and all that other stuff can kind of dehydrate, dehydrate the skin. So, you know, to kind of lock things in, keeping that hydration, I would probably use something like this at night during the summertime as well. Have you tried this? Would you try it? Let me know. Next up, the Paula's Choice Omega Plus Complex Moisturizer with Chia and Flaxseed. This is $35 for 1.7 fluid ounces of product. This is also fragrance free. And um, it's got quite a weird smell to it. <laughs> now again, fragrance free doesn't mean that a product is not going to have a scent. It just means that there are no components in there specifically to fragrant the product. It's, it's It smells like it's trying to be like spa-like, but then it smells like like glue and maybe like a, it, it's, it smells like a household cleaning item that I can't put my finger on. I mean, you know, from, <laughs> I'm the one with the crazy nose. You know, you might not mind that at all. Weird smell aside, this starts out pretty creamy but feels really lightweight. So I would say this is more, um, I think this was in the medium moisturizer category in Dr. Alexis's video. It leaves a little sheen, not, nothing too bad. This would be something that I wouldn't mind wearing in the winter time during the day and then just put my sunscreen on top. And then it wouldn't be bad for me as a nighttime moisturizer. If you have dry skin, I think this is something that you might like for, you know, most times during the year. It depends on the climate near you, you know, how the seasons do and whatnot. But I would say that this would be a pretty standard daytime moisturizer for someone with drier skin. You know, of course you put your sunscreen on top of it. Have you tried this? Would you try this? Let me know in the comments. Next up we have the Ordinary Ascorbyl Tetro Isopalmitate solution 20 percent in vitamin f this is 17 dollars and 80 cents and you're gonna get one fluid ounce of product this is also fragrance free this is a really lightweight oil i put it on by itself and i didn't feel heavy or look very shiny with it you can also use this on top of your regular moisturizer when i did that i also didn't feel like it was very heavy or greasy you can also mix a couple of drops of it into your moisturizer, uh, especially if you have a moisturizer at home that you love, but doesn't have the vitamin F in it. So that was another tip from Dr. Alexis in her video. You can kind of just add a little bit more in there. Another thing that she mentioned in her video, which I suggest you watching from start to finish so you don't miss a thing, is that some of these oils tend to have a very shorter shelf life and 
She mentioned not to, you know, put all your coins into one of these types of oils because after about three to six months, you know, it's not, it's not going to get, it's not going to give what it was supposed to give, you know? So as I mentioned before, these moisturizers on their own are not going to fade your hyperpigmentation. You need a full routine where everything joins together hand in hand and works in tangent to eliminate the dark spots. And at the same time, you do not want things in your skincare routine that can irritate your skin because as we all know, sometimes all roads lead to hyperpigmentation and irritation to the inflammation to the hyperpigmentation. It's a whole Asian. You don't, you don't want to have things in your skincare routine that are gonna be counterproductive to your goal of fading your dark spots. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want more information on what other products you need to put in your skincare routine if you are fading dark spots, make sure you check out the two playlists. See, Cat Williams wants to say, hey. Make sure you check out the two playlists. There is one on the actives that you need for hyperpigmentation. A lot of the technical stuff. Dr. Alexa Stevens makes an appearance in two of those videos, so check that out. There is also a playlist of hyperpigmentation skincare routines. I talked to you about my own routine that I followed when I had issues with dark spots. But then there are also viewers, quite like yourselves, who come on the channel and talk about how they faded their hyperpigmentation. People who are fading hyperpigmentation while dealing with rosacea, people with hyperpigmentation and sensitive skin, people who did it in just three easy steps. All of that is in there, so make sure you check out those videos. I will link it above and below, but it's also on my channel. While you are in the description box, make sure you follow me on social because when I'm not here, I'm elsewhere on the internet. Just friend of my chair, just friend, friend, friend. And I will see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.